Chekina.fm, disponible Kounia sous HD. Mais quelque façon, ou ka connecté à Chekina sur Radio HD. Premièrement, gardez si radio la HD. Ensuite, tournez sur 93.1 pour joindre Chekina.fm. Et puis, cliquez sur HD3. Tout ce qui est chez Kinala, cassez le bouton. Chez Kinala.fm, disponible pour Néa sous 93.1 HD3.
glory may walk in. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may walk in. Who is the King of glory? Who is the King of glory? Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up the heads, O ye gates, that the King of glory may walk in. Who is the King of glory? 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 The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Part el bevoleto. El bevu part eternel. Que le roi de gloire fasse son entrée. Part el bevoleto. El bevu part eternel. Que le roi de gloire fasse son entrée. Qui est ce roi de gloire? L'éternel fort et puissant. L'éternel fort et puissant. L'éternel puissant dans les combats. Qui est ce roi de gloire? Qui est ce roi de gloire? Qui est ce roi de gloire? L'éternel fort et puissant. L'éternel fort et puissant. L'éternel fort et puissant. L'éternel fort et puissant. L'éternel puissant dans les combats. Puissant, 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 puissant. Puissant, puissant, puissant. La marche est et les mots sont tous. Nous venons adorer Wassa à Swaya. Nous venons voir Wassa gloire à Swaya. Nous venons voir les louanges que les mêmes seuls méritent. Frappez-moi au bon Dieu gloire. Frappez-moi au bon Dieu gloire. Frappez-moi au bon Dieu gloire. Le bon chôteau, il y a un moment où je All the glory is to you, Jesus. All the glory is to you, Jesus. Not unto us be the glory, but to you because of your loving kindness. Not unto us be the glory, but to you because of your loving kindness. Lift up, 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 lift up the heads of all ye gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the king, the king of glory, the only king, the only king, the only king, the only king may walk in. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Are you happy to be in the presence of the Lord tonight? To give the king of glory all the glory that is due his name? Do you believe that he's worthy of the glory? Do you believe that he's worthy of the honor? Do you believe that there's nobody like him? Hallelujah. Look to your neighbor and tell him I'm happy to see you in the presence of the Lord tonight. Say it with a smile and say that Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. The song says praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. Do you want to turn your eyes upon Jesus today? Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands and give him praise. We came to celebrate the name of Jesus.
filles, ils voulaient les photos, ils cherchaient de l'eau, louange et gloire, louange et gloire, louange et gloire, louange et gloire, le bon et l'amour. C'est pour ma gloire, lui protéger, forme ma gloire, lui plante à moi, forme ma gloire, non m'en non m'en même, 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 Qui 
somebody shout hallelujah we worship you oh lord we give you all the glory and honor that is to your name jesus there's some like you hallelujah we will bless the lord at all time and his praise shall continually be in our mouth great is he that is in me than he that is in the world we serve a mighty god somebody shout glory you oh God hallelujah, hallelujah you're worthy Jesus hallelujah Come on, open your mouth and give the Lord to hear the praise. And to hear the worship in this place. We worship you, oh God. We bless your holy name, Jesus. You're worthy, God. You're worthy. Hallelujah, Jesus. You make a way out of no way, Jesus. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. I will exalt you. You are my God. How many of you can testify that? Who can tell my side? I will. I will exalt you, hallelujah Jesus, I will exalt you, there is no like you Lord, I will, I will exalt you, just because, just because you are.
worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. Yes. Give him your heart tonight. Give him your heart tonight. He almost shake it, Baba. My hiding place, my shape, my treasure, Lord, you are.
Clap your hand and exalt the Lord. That is who you are. to the motherless. You're a father to the fatherless. You're a friend to the friendless. Surely you are a healer. You are a provider. You are king of kings and lord of lords. All glory and honor belong to you. Let's celebrate the king of kings and the lord of lords to whom all glory and honor is due. We worship you Jesus. We worship we worship you. We honor you, Jesus. Let your name be lifted up in this place. Let your name be lifted up. Let your name be lifted up. Let your name be lifted up. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord. Your beauty. It's all I see And when your eyes are on this child Your grace about to be Oh Lord, your beauty in life can simply be in God you got to be connected to him to be fulfilled everything that is created needs need to stay connected to its source our goal at Tabernacle of Glory is to build a multi-ethnic community that glorifies God through passionate worship fervent prayer faithful application of scripture sincere fellowship, effective evangelism, and solid discipleship. When God was about to create man, he didn't speak to the ground, and he didn't speak to the water, and he didn't fix to the sky. He said, let us create man in our image, in our likeness. Everything that is created needs, needs to stay connected to its source. When you are disconnected with your God, you are dead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a round of applause in this house. Let's shout hallelujah. 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 Say, Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, you are awesome.
Praise God. Well, we're so glad um, to be here. So glad to, uh, to uh, and so grateful. First of all, grateful for the presence of God in this place. Graceful for Pastor Benny for thinking about us. Hallelujah. Um, on his way from Brazil. We're so glad to have him with us. What I'm going to do very quickly, we're going to pray for the, our building program and then our building and then I'm going to introduce Pastor Benny. But I'm so glad to tell you, we finally signed with the contractor today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, you are awesome. You are glorious. Father, we glorify you. We lift you up. We magnify you. Let your name be praised. Let your name be exalted. Let your name be lifted up. Let your name be magnified. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to thank the Lord for all of you who've been fasting. We've been negotiating for three months now. That's the second contractor. We neg negotiated with one for about um, for six months. And then we have to drop that contractor and negotiate it for another six months. So on my way to coming here, I was able to sign the contract in the car. So we thank the Lord for it. Let, let's, stretch, let's stretch our hands towards um, the building. So you guys know what we are looking at right now. We signed today. Um, the, the construction period is 455 days. So that leads us to the 17th of June, 2020. Praise God. All right, so the, the, the 17th of June, 2020, um, we're trusting the Lord and we're going to trust the Lord that we move on without a hiccup in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's stretch our hands. Hallelujah. Oh Lord. You're beautiful. Say your face. Your face is all I see. And when, and when your eyes are on this child, your grace abides. Come on, say it one more time, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, you're beautiful. Say your face is all I see. Your face is all I see. And when you rise, and when your eyes are Everybody just stretch your hands in the direction of that building wherever you are father we want to thank you for your faithfulness we want to thank you because you're beautiful we want to thank you because there is no one like you in the name of Jesus Christ we thank you for your faithfulness throughout all of that season in the name of Jesus Christ thank you for honoring our time of prayer thank you for honoring our time of fasting thank you for making provision thank you for giving us the right people to do the work in the name of Jesus Christ so father I pray that there'll be no more hiccups in the name of Jesus Christ no more delays in the name of Jesus Christ I declare everything will run and will happen swiftly and the name of Jesus Christ will be glorified so father we thank you we honor you and love you as a church thank you for who you are Thank you for being faithful. And somebody said, Amen. somebody said, Amen. somebody said, Amen. hallelujah. I am so glad to present um, um, to you guys a definitely a general in the body of Christ. Someone who's marked the history of Christianity, 
not only he's marked the history of Christianity he's marked my life I had been preaching for a long time many years about 15 years prior uh, but I didn't really know what the anointing was I had never heard about it before so it was when I went to one of his crusades in Orlando Florida I picked up a series of teachings that he has about 12 DVDs on the anointing and I started learning about the anointing and as a result years later the anointing and the grace that rests on this ministry is because um, I was able to get myself exposed to his teaching and the anointing started to touch my life and started to touch the entire church so I'm so glad to present um, to everyone tonight as he comes with his team um, as well tonight to minister to us both in worship and teaching as the Lord leads him Pastor Benny Hinn let's put together and welcome let's welcome Pastor Benny thank you Please be seated. Thank you. And I'm so glad you're all here. And the dear choir, you sang so beautiful. But right now, I want you all go and take a seat. And, the, and the, all the gentlemen that are on the instruments can go also, except Bruce. Thank you. You can all go and enjoy the service. Get ready for tonight. I'm so glad you all came. And, and I want to say a, a big welcome to the people in the overflow. By the way, I am so happy, Pastor Greg, I'm so happy to hear the announcement you've just made. Finally, huh? Wow. There is a, an amazing anointing on this man of God. This is your wife. So nice to see you. When I met, when I met Pastor Greg, I loved him immediately. Because really, I'm being honest with you. You know, I've met a lot of pastors and ministers throughout the world. And, you know, most of them are wonderful people. And, uh, but some of them, you, when you meet them, that like something happens. You're one of those people, I'll tell you. And I'm very glad to see Pastor Jonathan Miller down here. There he is. You know who he is. Well, he has a great church in Orlando. Yeah. You, you want to stand up and turn around so they can see who you are? Give him a big, big God bless. Yeah. They drove... Uh, they drove from Orlando just to be here. And he's preaching throughout the world, this young man. He, he's a dynamic preacher. Yeah, upcoming, really great. Why don't you all stand up and turn around so they can see who, who, who's with him. Yeah. There we go. I just came back from Brazil. So... Uh, yesterday was it yesterday the day before yesterday <laughs> that was the most you know I think I need to slow down <laughs> the older I get the busier I get by the, by the way now they, they are going to shut that smoke right yeah please because it's going to mess my hair guys <laughs> I'm sorry I just got to be real with you yeah I don't like the smoke because it's just uh, better for me and for some of you too. The Lord, oh Jesus is so precious. Can we just throw him a kiss please? <laughs> Don't you, you know I call him now, I call the Lord darling Jesus, darling. Lift your hands and say, Darling Jesus. I mean that. I really mean that. The Lord is so precious. Oh, serving Him is the most wonderful thing. 
Who wants, you know, today I was in the hotel and I just began to weep a little bit. I was listening to a beautiful worship song, an old song. Most of you probably don't even know it, but it's okay. And I'm thinking, why would God want to even bother with men? It just hit me, you know, like, I think that's why David said, what is man that you're mindful of him? Like, what is it about men? Please understand something. Um, you know what we are? Dust with legs. Think about that. That's all we are. You look at people walking in the mall. I was telling one of my my people. I said, look at these people. They're just dust with legs. And all they focus on is the dust. They wake up in the morning. They clean the dust. They go to work, almost kill themselves to feed the body. All people do in life is for this. That's it. All the work, all the heartache, all the sweat, all the trouble, and then they die. That's not life. That's not life at all. And you think about, by the way, who's sitting on those seats right there, the second row? Are, are they like reserved for, for angels? There's two things I hate. Demons and, and empty seats. So can we put some people there that are spiritual people? Yeah. No, no, you're going to create an empty seat there now. Get someone that I can't see their seat up there. Marie, Marie, the last shall be first. Get me two people that are standing up there. There's people in the overflow, for goodness sake. There's people in the overflow. Are you people alive in the spirit, ladies? Are you alive in the spirit? Hallelujah. That's the kind of people I like. Come sit right here. But let me, let me just talk to you a little bit. Can I come down? I, I want to look at your face. I want, to, I want to ask you a question. You can stop playing for a second. I want to ask you a question. If the Queen of England called you, and she wanted to meet you next week. What would you do? You go to a store, buy the nicest suit or the nicest dress you can find. You're going to fix yourself all up, spend some money on yourself, fly to London, pay your, your fare, your hotel, to meet the queen for a few seconds. But think about this. You're about to meet the King of Glory. But my question is, what are you doing to prepare? What are you doing to prepare? He already told you he's coming to meet you. But what are you doing to prepare? And how do you prepare? You know, physically you prepare by fixing your hair, whatever, getting a nice dress, nice suit, all that. How do you, how do you prepare in the spirit? Because there's, there's no stores to go to. Well, not really. You're already in the store. But you have to prepare. Now, these people, these people that are outside, that wake up in the morning and wear themselves out and work so hard and then they die when it's all over. What is life about for them? Nothing. My dog has a better life than most people. My dog doesn't have to go to work. He has no worries as long as I feed him. He has no worries. He doesn't have to worry about a job or where to live, where to eat, whatever, as long as I'm taking care of it. But think about some people, what they go through 
and then they die without the Lord. Who wants to live like that? I've said to the Lord, I said, it would be better to have never been born than to live without you. Because why even live? And there's a lot of people that go to church that don't know this precious Jesus. All they know is religion. You know, the, the flesh can praise and pray and preach, but don't know the Lord. The cry, the cry in Paul's heart when he was almost 57 years of age, he died about 62, 63, they say in history. But think about that he got saved on the road to Damascus, about 31 years of age, historically speaking, and they can give you that because of who reigned, like what emperor, you know, was on the throne and all that. So if you, if you study his life, he got saved about 30, 31, somewhere there. He died about 30 so years later. And the last thing he said, that I may know him. And you think, how could you say that? Don't you know him? But the cry in every believer is one cry. A true believer has one cry. I want to know him. That's it. You know, I get deeply offended when people say, Oh, my grandmama is in heaven and I want to see my grandma in heaven. You're going to heaven to see your grandmama? Heaven is not about your grandma Amen. or about your loved ones. There's no promise in the Bible that you, you, you're going to go to heaven because they're there. David said, who do I have in heaven but thee? Yeah. Nobody. We're not going to heaven to see grandmas and moms and dads. You people don't understand. You won't think the same way you do today. That new body of yours won't have the same emotions about family. Salvation is not about heaven. It's about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And I really want to get this through to you. I, I've got to get this through to you because you know what? I'm 67 on my almost 68 in a year. And you think about this as you grow older. When I see the Lord, I want him to smile. People ask me, what do you want when you get to heaven? I want to see the smile. Because a lot of people, this could shock you. A lot of people that I have met, I've been in it a long time. I think I've preach to more people than most people. I'm just being honest here. And, and I've met a lot of people and very few of them, very few of them touched my heart. Very few of them. Real Christians. Real Christians. I'm not saying the rest are not. But there, 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 there's something about the Christian life where you disconnect from the world. You die to self. Today, nobody taught, uh, teaches about death to self. And I'll tell you the Christians that really touched me. Richard Rombrandt was the first man I ever was touched by. Most of you never even heard his name. He was a pastor from Romania that suffered for his faith in Siberia. I was 19 years old when I heard that man preach. His face was lit, lit up like an angel. I still remember everything about that man. He so touched my heart. He looked just like, I don't know what to say, but I think uh, <sighs> there's no one really like Jesus. No, I don't think so. None. There's not like him. But certain saints you meet and you look at them and you see him in their eyes. 
You know what I mean by that? He was one of them. The second was Kori Ten Boom. Ever heard the name Kori Ten Boom? How many have? Put your hands up high. How many have never heard the name Kori Ten Boom? Put your hands up high. Oh, I feel so sorry for you. <laughs> Look on Google, The Hiding Place. It's a movie that Billy Graham did. Have you heard of The Hiding Place? That's her story. That woman, Dutch from Holland, that went to a concentration camp for hiding Jews in their home, lit up like a, like a, like a lamp. When she talked about Jesus, you were just, you were just so, you, you didn't want anyone to talk to you. Catherine Kuhlman was another person, another one that touched my life. What an amazing, powerful presence of the Lord. When she'd walk on the platform, I would cry, literally. I just, do, would you believe it if I tell you that woman would walk on the platform and miracles happened with nobody doing anything? She lived in the presence of God. That's what I want before I'm dead. That we would get to the place that it's all about the Lord. It's all about the Lord. And though those people stand up, you know, in your mind. The Corys, the Catherines, the, the Richard Rombrands, Brother Andrew is another one that touched my life. I heard that man preach. I, I was only 19 years old. I heard Brother Andrew. One of the greatest saints that ever lived was Brother Andrew. God smuggler, we used to call him, would smuggle Bibles into the Soviet Union and the Eastern Bloc nations. Almost got killed more than once. So these saints, it's time we live like saints. All of us. Every one of us. And life is not about this. Life is not about getting up and working and then dying. It's not life at all, saints. One thing you have to focus on, get to know your Redeemer. Yeah. And get to know, get to know His mind. Can I ask you a question? And I don't want to embarrass you because I love you too much. How many have read the whole Bible through? Put your hands up high. Hmm. How many have not? Put your hands up high. Don't be embarrassed, come on. Okay, a lot of you. Why haven't you? Well, maybe you just don't understand parts of it. I get it. I'm not here to condemn you. I love you. But please, stop watching TV and start reading the Bible. It changed your life. This, this would make you, shock you, and maybe make you feel better about yourself. I don't know. But I had a pastor's conference not long ago, and I asked them all, how many have never read the Bible? 40% of preachers put their hands up. And one woman began to argue with me on the front row. Very elegant, blonde lady. She was a pastor's wife. She said, you expect me to read the genealogies? I said, yes. I don't understand them. I said, you will one day. I, you know, I, I, I want to make you hungry for the Lord. I read my Bible three times a year. And I love it. I have such a blessed time reading the Word. God knows I'm telling you the truth. I open my worship music and I read the Bible. I never even watch TV anymore. There's nothing on this TV set that I want. I don't want to get to heaven and be an embarrassment. I don't want to be ashamed. Because some folks will get to heaven and find out how much they missed on earth. There's a lot for you as a Christian. Don't miss it. I beg of you. Don't wait till it's too late. Life is too short. Why mess up with it? It was only yesterday I was 10. I remember clearly when I went to school, I was 10. It was only yesterday I got married. 
It was only yesterday I had Jessica. Now she's 36 years old. Life goes shh, like this. And the older you get, the faster it goes. So don't wait till it's too late. Don't wait till it's too late. Life is too precious to be wasted on the internet. Too precious to be wasted on silly programs. I got to tell you, I said to a lady one day, I said, and I was in some place, and I see this woman watching the, that show, the voice, the voice, whatever it's called. I said, what is this doing for your spiritual life? She was offended. I said, why are you watching this? I like it. I said, but what is it doing for your spiritual life? She had no answer. I said, won't you do more for your life and future and eternity by reading the Bible now? She didn't want to even hear it. You see, the flesh loves the flesh. People who are living in the flesh love the flesh. What feeds the flesh, they want to spend time getting more of it. But what, what are you gaining spiritually? You're here tonight singing, Oh Lord, you're beautiful. Do you mean it? <laughs> Is he really that beautiful? Or only do you only sing that in church? But when you're home, he's not that beautiful. Rather, you'd watch something else. Look, look, I know some of you are not that comfortable I'm talking to you like this. I really don't care. I love you, okay? I want to see your life blessed. Look, can I be really honest with you? I've been preaching 45 years. I almost lost my Redeemer. I almost lost my life. Because you become so attached to ministry. Attached to a monster. How to keep the monster alive. It's called ministry. While the Lord is being ignored. And one day, and I don't want to tell you the whole story, but one day I woke up. I just woke up. And the Lord spoke to me without me thinking about him. He said, I'm just waiting for you to come back home. And I began weeping. And you get so involved. We had a church in Orlando, 10,000 people on Sunday. People lining up outside. Then the crusades began and everyone wanted to know Benny Hinn. <laughs> get a picture with Benny Hinn. All that stuff. I've met presidents. I've met people in government. And I'm thinking, what are they doing? I, I, I felt sorry for some of them. Because all they do is they're involved in whatever they do. Listen to me. I almost died a few years ago. 2015, I was in the hospital. That, that was, I, I think, after I came to be with you. They rushed me to intensive care. And the doctor, Tiansung is his name, took me by the hand. I didn't even know I had... Any problems? I've never been sick. I had congestive heart failure. My ejection fraction, I don't know whether you people know what that is. How many know what I'm talking about? Okay. It's, it's how the heart beats. It should be 60. How many nurses here? Okay. Stand up, nurse. Stand up, darling. If you're a nurse, stand up. Now, you, you, you understand this because some people don't. They say your, your ejection fraction should be about 50 to 60, right? To be healthy. Mine was 14. Okay, you understood that. That, that, that means you're dead. And, and, and anything under 20, you're almost gone. Thank you, thank you, sweetie. They rushed me into intensive care and had to give me LASIK to get all the liquid out of me. Two weeks I was in there. And the doctor, who I never met in my life, Almost wept, he says. He took me by the hand. He said, I know who you are and I won't let you die. They go, oh my God, I'm dying. <laughs> All those preachers that wanted to meet me, 
didn't bother with me when I was dying. Nobody called to say, are you okay? But very few did, very few, very few. And you wake up to, what am I doing? You give your time and energy away to people and family who never bothered to call. The only time family calls is when they want your money. Am I being too honest? Are you happy I'm honest like that? Yeah. I'm, I'm laying in ICU and nobody even calls. My cousins didn't call. Hardly anybody called. Very few called. And those that called, I never thought would call. And I came out of the hospital. And I went, had to go through therapy and all that to, to rebuild your heart. It took months. I'm fine now. I'm wonderful. But I was almost dead then. But listen, listen. I had a dream. Can I tell you about my dream? Yes. Right after I came out of the hospital. I had a dream. It shook me up. I hope it will shake you up too. I see myself standing in a, in a line with a bunch of people. And I looked across. And I see this beautiful gate sparkling like diamonds. And I saw the Lord standing on one side of it. I'll never forget that. I don't often have dreams like that. On the other side of the gate, I see a massive organ. And on the organ was a lady I knew who passed away years ago named Jeannie Klattenberg. Her husband is Alex Klattenberg in Orlando. She was a magnificent musician. And, and as we're standing in line, waiting to enter heaven, the Lord did this, and one by one went in, or was rejected. And the Lord did this, and she would play this beautiful crescendo. The music was just heavenly. And the gate opened, and the individual would walk in, and then the gate would shut. And the Lord would do this again. And the next person went in. I'm kind of halfway in line waiting for my turn. This is all in my dream. And then I see the Lord doing this. And, you, and two massive men dressed in white came and took this person out of the line who was struck with fear that I'll not forget. You know how it says, gnashing of teeth? You know that? The fear that hit that individual was something you can't forget in your mind. And, and she played this terrible music, came out of the organ, like frightening. And then the Lord did this again, same thing happened. My turn came, and I'm thinking, okay, now this is it, in my dream. Is he going to do this or this? <laughs> and when I am standing there, everybody's looking at the Lord, and I'm looking at the Lord, I could feel my heart in the dream, I could feel myself. I don't know how else to say that. And, I, and he's looking at me very serious. And then I wake up. And when I wake up, I hear his voice. And it stunned me. He said, I'm watching you. Don't blow it. It scared me. People, I tell you, I don't want to blow it. He gave me a warning. He said, you? Oh, yes, me. What did Paul write in Corinthians? He said, I keep my body under subjection, lest after I have preached to others, I will be a castaway. If Paul would be a castaway, you think we have a chance if we blow it? Preachers have blown it. I knew one guy with a healing ministry, powerful healing minister. When he was dying with AIDS, he saw demons come to get him. And began to scream, they're coming to get me, they're coming to get me. That's not something I want. It's not something you want. But three years ago when my mom went to be with the Lord, she was singing, How Great Thou Art. Weeping. And we're all weeping, watching her worship God right before she died. And I said, Lord, I want to go like that. Peace and joy that touched her face. Listen to me. Don't play games with your life. It's too short and too precious to be wasted on people that will stab you. 
when you think they love you. Take my word for it. There's no such thing as friends in the world. There's only interests. Only interests. If they can use you, they'll befriend you. And when they're done using you, they'll drop you. Be careful. No one ever said, no one ever said to you in life, like mommy, daddy, brother, sister, no one has ever said to you, I'm with you always. Even if they did, nice thought. But they can't do it. Who can do that? Nobody can. Only the Lord can. And only the Lord said that to us. He said, I shall never leave thee. I shall never forsake thee. Jesus said that, not mommy, not daddy, not brother, sister, aunt and uncle and all the rest of them. No one can say it. And if they say it, they can't even do it. We are giving our time to people that don't deserve our time. And we are neglecting, we are neglecting the person who deserves our time. His name is Jesus. So I'm here to tell you, come back to Jesus. Life without him has no meaning. No meaning whatsoever. Some of you young people, young ladies, pretty ladies, all they want, those, those guys after you, all they want is your body. Or your money. Then the other way around too. Jesus doesn't want your money. He wants your heart. And he loves you and he's always there for you. Believe me, believe me, believe me. The longer you live, the more you discover how meaningless life is without the Lord. He gives life meaning. I have seen so many people with cancer. I've seen so many people who are dying with, who are dying with all kinds of diseases. And all they care about is, I want to get healed. They don't care about God. They just want to be healed. Yet I've seen many who were just as sick. And all they talked about is Jesus. And you had such peace in their face, such joy. It wasn't about themselves. I think God sometimes doesn't heal those that all they focus on is my healing, my healing, my healing, my healing. It's like he's, he's their, their servant to do what they, what, what they demand. Joy, peace in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness in the Holy Ghost comes when we turn our hearts and lives to the Lord. You know, there's an old song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. There's an old song that I, I heard when, when, when I got saved. Some, some of you know it. And the words are beautiful. I'm sure you know it. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Listen. Look full. In his wonderful face And the things of this earth Will go strangely dim In the light of his glory and grace You sweet people, you, you remember your grandmamas Or your mommy who loved Jesus so much, you know Has left such an impact on your life Because you love the Lord it's all about Jesus. You think about those saintly people that lived before you. Maybe in your family you have some precious saint somewhere that talked about Jesus all the time. I'll tell you someone else that touched my life. I don't know her name though. I walked into Azusa Street before they tore that house down. This sweet African-American woman opened the door. Her face lit up with glory. An old woman. She said, come in. I said, well, I, this was years ago. I said, I just wanted to visit 
the house where the revival began. Oh, she said, they come from around the world. Please come in. And I came in with my dear wife, Suzanne. We just gotten married a few months before that. So this is years back. And we had some pastors from Melody Land in California. And then she said, and she was lit up. Like, I'm, t I'm telling you, her face was glorious, shining. And she began to talk about the Lord. I'll never forget that lady. It was all Jesus, all Jesus, all Jesus. And then I said, well, please, just kind of you, can you share with us what happened? Oh, she said, I was in that service. She was in that room when it hit. And she began to tell us how the, gl the glory of God came, came upon Brother Seymour. And she knew him. And she said, he was standing right where you're standing. And I didn't want to move. I was frozen there. I said, this is it. She said, this is the piano. I was so touched by that lady's glorious face and her words. Such precious words came out of her mouth. So please tonight, forget the world. Forget those friends that have used you. Forget all the things that mean nothing anyways. And please stop watching TV. It's so depressing. Shut it off. This may shock you. I canceled Amazon and Netflix. I have no interest in watching that garbage. You, you keep Amazon for books and Christian books and this and that, but... It's a fly. You don't want to live the rest of your life wasting it on nothing. Now lift your hands and tell him how much you love him. Come on. I'm glad I talked to you and I'm glad you let me talk to you. It's all about the Lord. It's all about the Lord. Why don't you stand up and thank him for his love for you? He'll never leave you. He never has. He never will. Lift your hands and just bless him. Come on. Just tell him, thank you for loving me, Lord. Thank you for never walking out on me. Come on, talk to him. Thank you for being so sweet to me. Thank you for being my wonderful friend. I love you, Lord, with all my heart. And so tonight, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Turn your eyes. Just turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face And the things of this earth Will grow strangely dim In the light of his glory and grace now lift your voices, Jesus, 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 there is something about that name, Master, Master, Savior, Jesus. Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain, you are Jesus, 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 let all heaven and the earth proclaim. Everything in the instruments, please. Kings and kingdoms, they'll all pass away. But there's something about that name. But there's something about 
I want, I want who, whoever is handling sound to give me all the volume you can on the instrument here. I want to hear this instrument. I want this ins instrument to fill the whole auditorium. That's better. Come on, lift your voices. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee. How great. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior your God to thee how great thou art how great thou O oh Lord my God when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder thy power throughout the universe displayed lift your voices to him then sings my soul my soul Blessed be your name, how great, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great. And when I think that God is son not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in, I scarce can take it. That on the cross, my burdens gladly bearing, my burdens gladly bearing. He bled and died. He bled and died to take away my sin. To take away my sin. Then sings my soul. Then sings my soul. My Savior God. How great. How great. Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God. How great Thou art. How great. When Christ shall come with shouts of acclamations and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow then I shall bow in humble adorations and there proclaim my God 
tonight in Jesus name we ask you for a fresh touch on our life quicken us I pray wonderful Heavenly Father oh blessed Holy Spirit reveal Jesus to our hearts all his fullness give us a love we've never had give us a love we've never known that will burn deep in our inner man and deep in our soul to love him and only him to worship only him to bless only Jesus and wonderful master wonderful Jesus be pleased with our life fulfill your will in our life that we might be pleasing sight on that day when we stand before you we'll hear you say well done our life will not be wasted our life will count for you Give you all the praise. Thank you for dying for our salvation. Thank you for being our great high priest. Thank you for loving us still. Thank you for never walking away from us when we deserve to be forsaken. You have not forsaken us. And when we do not deserve forgiveness, you forgive us. We don't deserve your love, you love us. When we forget you, you never forget us. But before, Lord, it's too late. Don't let us waste any more time on the world and things that don't matter in life. Give us a heart after you. To love you and only to know you. Lift your hands to him, saints. Let's worship him for a few minutes. Forget yourself, forget your troubles, forget why you came today. This is a a special appointment with the Son of God. That's why you're here. And glory, glory, glory to the Lamb. to the Lamb of God. For you are glorious and worthy 
tonight minister your grace and your word mightily in Jesus name and God's people said amen, amen. please be seated I want to minister the word and then we're gonna allow the Lord to do what he wants to do in healing you I want you to take your Bibles and I want to give you the scriptures today. Genesis chapter 2, please. I want to minister the word. There's some people coming in. Maybe we can help them find seats. Please, Marie or one of the ushers there. And the word I have for you will change your life if you allow the Lord to do it. I want to talk about the world of the living dead. That's my message tonight. The world of the living dead. I know it's a strange title, but you'll see why I call it that. You have to understand that you and I were created for covenant in the image of God, uniquely fitted to know Him, uniquely fitted to love Him. Now the question is, why did God create man? What's the meaning of life, existence? Now. When you read the Bible, you, you come to the conclusion and amazingly, you stand amazed that God, with no necessity within Him, no pressure from without, no pressure within, would create a being with free will. The answer to this incredible question, why did he create me? Well, if you look at the scriptures, and we have to stay with the scriptures, God chose to create man for one reason. God did not create you because he was lonely. God did not create you because he was unfulfilled. In fact, he's the eternally fulfilled one. God did not create man because he was lonely. God didn't create man because he was unfulfilled. He created man for one reason. To pour his love on him. Because love is not love till you give it away. And man was created 
as a result of an act of love. Angels were not. Angels have never said to God, I love you. They have no capacity. Angels never heard God say, I love you with an everlasting love. He said that to humanity. Having loved them, the Gospel of John says, having loved them, he loved them unto the end. For God so loved the world, not the angels. For God so loved humanity, he gave his only begotten son. Now, I want you to listen to this. This is very important. You are more valuable to God than all the angels of heaven. You are more expensive than all creation. You have such value. It cost God nothing to create the universe. It cost him nothing to create all that's out there. The heavens, the earth, and the beyond that science hasn't even discovered yet. It cost him nothing to create man. It cost him nothing to create all the beauty around us. It cost him everything to save your soul. Think about that. It costs him nothing to create men or creation or the world and all the beauty around us. It cost him everything to save one soul. He counts your hair. That's how much you're loved. Wait. Shh, don't preach for me. You never counted your children's hair. God counts yours. You, you're more precious to him than your children are to you. God thinks about you, the scripture says, more than there is sand on the seashore. More than the stars in the heavens. The psalmist said, if, if, if I should count your thoughts towards me, they are more in number than the stars of the heavens or the sand upon the seashore. God thinks about you all the time. His love is not understood. I mean, who can really understand the love of God? Why did he create you? His love. You're his, if I can say, you were created out of love. And now God gives man the choice to love him back or not. And so he gave him a choice. He said, now look, I'm going to give you the whole planet. You can have everything you want except one thing. Don't touch the tree. It wasn't about the tree. It was more than that. He said, you can have everything you want. You can have eternal life by eating the fruit of the tree of life. He gave him the whole planet. Adam was the richest man that ever lived. He owned the earth and all that's in it. God gave that to him as a gift. He said, you can have everything except one thing. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But most people don't understand what was it about the tree. Now, when the devil came to tempt men, he offered one thing for him. A lie, of course. But one thing that God never offered man, divinity. 
It wasn't about the tree. It was about divinity. He said to Adam and Eve, if you eat of it, you'll be just like God. He tempted them with divinity. That's one thing men cannot have. And to this day, the devil is offering men the same thing. Divinity. To be a God unto yourself. What's the world looking for today? Divinity. The devil is still offering that to humanity. They want to be the boss. A God in their own life and much more. And at that moment, Adam died. But let me, let me explain what I mean by he died. But first of all, let's look at Genesis 2. And let's read verse 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayst freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Now, the enemy comes in Genesis 3 verse 4 and says to the lady, to Eve, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes will be opened. You'll be as gods, knowing good and evil. So here's uh, Adam, the owner of the earth. Here's Adam that lacked nothing. Here's Adam that needed nothing and had no lack in his life being tempted by the devil who dangled before him one thing he couldn't have. Why would Adam consider eating of a tree that guaranteed his death? Why did he do it? Well, I'll tell you. Because he believed a lie. Sin, in its ultimate desire, wants to remove God and crown men in his place. That's what sin wants. That's what the, that's what the devil wants. The enemy's aim, don't worry about the sound, they'll fix it. The enemy's aim is to, is to dethrone God and crown men with divinity. Um, in Romans chapter 1, verse 25, we see what the devil has been doing and continues to do. Because it says in verse 25 of Romans 1, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. So, uh, humanity... It's changing the glory of God, as verse 23 says, into an image of corruptible things, men, birds, four-footed beasts, and so forth. So it says God gave them up to uncleanness because they decided to change the truth of God into a lie, except the lie of the devil. Because that's what sin wants. That's its ultimate desire. 
So by disobeying God, Adam declared independence. Obedience produces love. God had said to Adam, I give you the choice to love me or not love me because God did not want Adam's love to not be real. Legitimate love. So God creates him out of love and is looking for the man to love him back freely. So he gives him a free will. Will you choose to love me by obeying me? Because obedience turns into love. Always. How can you love Jesus without obeying him? Jesus said, don't call me Lord and not obey me. Obedience is proof of love. Not only does obedience bring love and produce love, it's also the result of love. Literally. When I obey, I'm telling that, that someone I love you. And then my love begins to grow and grow and grow and my obedience now comes out of it. Obedience produces love and love will produce obedience and it keeps going. And God was looking for that obedience. Satan comes and offers him divinity. He disobeys God. At that moment, he becomes independent. The Word of God does not teach independence. It teaches dependence upon the Lord. I want you to listen to this. Look at me, all of you. When Adam sinned, there's not one place it says he asked for forgiveness. When he sinned, you have to understand that he was lit up. The glory of God was so in him, it wrapped him. And he could not see his nakedness because of the light. He was shining with light. Just like Jesus on the mount. Remember when the Lord was on the mountain, he shone like the light. Adam was just like that. His wife, Adam, by the way, her name was not Eve. God called them both Adam. Genesis 5.2. He called them Adam. It was Adam who changed our name later to Eve. God never gave her that name. But God called them Adam and Adam. And Adam and Adam were lit up with glory. So much glory they could not even pay attention to their bodies. And when sin came into their life, they hid. And by hiding, they were saying to God, leave me alone. Why hide? Unless you're, you're saying to someone, get away. Not one time did Adam even show repentance. Not one time did he say, I'm sorry, I messed up, forgive me. Not one time. And when the Lord said, what have you done? He said, it's your fault. He blamed God. For his own sin. Yet in his love, God would still offer the man redemption. In Genesis 3.15 he said, the seed of the woman will destroy the devil. I'm going to still bring you back to myself even though you hate me. I'm going to redeem you. His love. Adam's descendants all became worshippers of devils. It didn't change God's covenant. It didn't change God's promise of redemption. Think about this in Jeremiah. So powerful God says to Israel. He says, you hate me, I'll give you a heart that will love me. You don't know me, I'll put my spirit in you and you'll know me from the least to the greatest. I will cause you to know me. I will cause you to walk with me. I will cause you to love me. What a God. 
when they rejected him, worshipped the devil himself, God said, I'm not giving up on you. Because I chose you, you didn't choose me. I want to say a few things later, but I just want you to keep listening. His love is based on an oath, a covenant. The reason you're not succeeding as a Christian is because you're trying to live the Christian life. You can't live the Christian life. Nobody can live the Christian life. Because you're trying. There's no word in the Bible it says try. Or try harder. Or struggle. It says yield. The Christian must yield. Not fight. Not struggle. Not try. Yield means surrender. Surrender is so easy. Oh, it's the easiest thing to do. Not one of you came in tonight and checked your chair. You didn't look at the legs to make sure they're on. You just sat on it. You surrendered to the chair <laughs> by letting go. <laughs> Believing that chair will hold you up. Why don't you trust God like that? If you have as much faith in God as you had tonight in the chair, and you still have in the chair, because not one of you is thinking about that chair falling apart with your weight on it. The chair will carry you because you know somebody did this, the, put the legs on right. Once you believe God will hold you up, not let you fall. Trust is simple. Just surrender. And the most difficult thing for Christians sometimes is to surrender. Because they want to help God. God didn't, is not looking for your help. You know, he said, I'm the vine, you're the branch. What does a branch do? Zero. A branch doesn't produce a thing. It just hangs in there. All, you have, all you've got to do is stay, stay connected to the vine. He said, I'm the vine, you're the branch. Branch do, does nothing. Just relax. Are you getting this? Yes. Surrender. So now, here we see this man, Adam. Rejecting God, walking away from God. Believing a lie. That he'd be like a God and finds himself dead. And God never gave up on that man. So, in disobeying God, he becomes independent. He severs himself from the source of life, from the meaning of his own existence. And now he disconnects himself from the source of life. And plunges himself into death. They said no. They said no to the union with God. And entered into the world of the living dead. Those people out there you see at work. The living dead. You see them walking. Riding buses. Going to malls. The living dead. Now listen here. Let me, let me talk about life. There's four kinds of life. Four different types of life the Bible talks about. God's life, human life, animal life, plant life. But these three, men, animal, plant, they are, they are not alive. They simply exist. Life is spiritual. Living is natural. May I say it again? Yes. To live is natural. To have life is spiritual. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life, not living. 
and have life, Zoe, the Hebrew word Chaya, God's life, more abundantly. So the people out there are living, but they're the living dead. They have no Chaya, they have no Zoe. There's no life, there's no God's kinds of life. So what did Adam lose? He lost life. He didn't lose living, he lost life. Jesus came to give us back life. What Adam lost, Jesus comes to give back to you life. So there's a lot of people living with no life. Some of you are in this auditorium. But God is offering you tonight life. What Adam lost. He lost life. So he died and he became a member of the living dead. Because God is the source of life. And human life shares in that life. So we receive our living from that life. Life is not about a beating heart and lungs full of air. That's living. Life, only Jesus gives that. Only Jesus gives that. So a human being is not alive. He only exists. He's living, but he's not alive. Only the Redeemer can give life, and only the redeemed can receive it. Only the Christian, only the believer, the real believer, can have chaya, life. And the minute you receive life, it's eternal. Your eternal life began at salvation. I got to get through to you. I got to get through to you. When that last moment comes and your heart takes its last beat and your lungs last breath, the body stops functioning. The body dies. The spirit of man because God gave that spirit, cannot die. But the spirit of the unbeliever is dead unto God. Dead unto God means no fellowship with the Lord. Separation from the Lord. That's what death is. Death is l missing the mark. Missing the reason why God created you. All have sinned and come short. They miss the mark. Missing the mark means they did not fulfill the reason God created them. God created you so you can be alive in Him. And your body is simply the cover over your life. Shining with bright life. The believer knows that when this body stops functioning, the real person will be in the presence of the Lord immediately and live forever in pure glory. The unbeliever goes immediately into a place called Sheol. We, we translate that hell. And in Sheol, there's torment forever. And later, Sheol, hell, will be thrown into a lake of fire forever for anyone who rejects Jesus. You see, God has done everything that can be done to save souls. But when a man says no to Jesus, he has just guaranteed his damnation. No one will go to hell without making that decision. No one gets to hell by accident. 
Life is a choice. Death is a choice. And I'm talking about spiritual death. A man said one day to me, I don't believe in hell. I said, you will when you, when you get there. <laughs> if there's no hell, there's no heaven. If there's no hell and heaven, there's no God or the devil. Then you're all, well, with no hope. Might as well go and forget everything. No, no. We live by faith, not by sight. Everything in me knows, everything in me knows, there's no question in my heart. When my heart will stop beating, I will be in the presence of the Lord. That's my faith. I have not grieved that my mom is gone because I know where she is. I have not grieved that my dad is gone because I know where he is. Because they're not dead. When I see people grieve, I can tell you what their temperature is. Their faith temperature. They, 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 they don't believe the Bible. It says that you sorrow not as others that have no hope. And all they do is sorrow. Oh, I miss my mom, miss my dad. Da, 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 da. They're in heaven, people. And quit saying they're dead. They're not dead. Only the shell dies. The body is the shell. The body is the earth suit. Or the body. As the Bible calls it, the tent, the cover, that dies. But one day God, does, the Lord's going to give you a brand new one. That's why even the body sleeps. There's no such thing as death in the Christian life. Because Jesus lives. And because he rose from the dead, it guarantees our resurrection from the dead. And because he rose from the dead, it qualifies him to be the savior of the world. Everyone else is dead. Jesus is alive. And manifests himself to us. Every day we live, he's more real to us today than to the crowd that saw him 2,000 years ago. How? By the Holy Spirit. How can you love someone you've never known? By the Holy Spirit. How can you love someone you've never seen? By the Holy Spirit. I love Jesus more than I love my own life. And you who love him, you feel the same. Why? By the Holy Spirit. What is that called? Chaya. Life. Zoe. My spirit is alive in Jesus. Who cares about the body? I'm going to get a brand new one anyways. The spirit is all we care about. Spiritual exercise brings life. Now listen, this is important. The Bible clearly declares <laughs> the Lord is your life. That's what Moses said in Deuteronomy chapter 8. There's no need to go to every scripture, but please hear this. This is important. You and I were created to know life. He is life. The Lord Jesus is life. Life is a person. And when that person who is life comes into my heart, then I become alive in him completely. When we talk about death, it's separation from God. So through disobedience, Adam plunged himself into death. Dead to God, alive only to his human awareness, alive only to the physical world, and light years below what God created him for. So that's why there's a hole in every man's heart today, as big as the universe itself, because they lack life. So there can be no contact with God from the human side. God cannot be known through logic. God cannot be known through intellect. Only by revelation can you know the Lord. Because it's spiritual. So searching for God within the realm of intellect, the realm of imagination, creates a God made in the image of man. 
When you seek for God through imagination and intellect, you create a God in your own image. So we only can seek Him by the Holy Spirit, by revelation, because searching for God through intellect, imagination, reduces God to a superhuman being, leaves man in greater darkness, and searching for God through the intellect, reason, imagination, leads to demonic deception. So, Adam and Eve did not become as gods like Satan promised them. Instead, they became slaves to a lie. Created to rule by God's life, they ended up being absorbed back into dust, into death. So now, life became pointless, meaningless. Listen to me. Men and women were created to be spirit persons, submitted to God, living in a realm of such glory that their bodies were only the vehicle of their spirit. That's it. For God created them with such light. God's light shone through their bodies like Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Man was covered with light, as Psalm 104 says. The minute sin entered, everything shut down. It stripped them of the glory of God. They went frantically trying to cover their own bodies. They lost the meaning of their existence. That's why people today ask, why am I here? Because they lost the reason of creation. The second they lost life, they became meaningless. Life became meaningless. So men and women without Jesus are flesh persons living with their flesh bodies as their centers. I repeat, men and women living without Jesus are flesh persons living with their flesh bodies as their center. Without Jesus, they are frames without pictures. And there's no meaning for a frame if there's no picture. Without Jesus, all you are, you're a frame when there's no picture in your life. That's all you are is a frame. There's no life. There's no Jesus in there. And that's why the scripture uses the word futile in describing the life lived in the flesh. In 1 Peter 1.18, Peter literally says that. He says, please hear this, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18, he says, for as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain or futile life, vain conversation received by traditions from your father, and that word, and that word vain means futile, futility. Ephesians 4, 17 says the same thing. Life without Jesus is futile. No meaning to it. It's simply a frame. There's no picture in it. Look at verse 17. It says, oh, this is so marvelous. I tell you, this is so marvelous. Having Jesus is worth everything. Not having him, why even live? Ephesians 4, 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you are henceforth, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles in the vanity or futility of their mind. Now, why did God create you? What was the reason for His creation? To share His glory. And so it says, all have sinned 
and come short of the glory. They literally lost the reason for creation. Why did God create them? Glory. What does sin come? It steals the glory. They missed the mark. All have sinned and come short of the glory. They missed the reason they were created. They missed becoming glory. And one day that glory is coming back. And it began at salvation. Romans 5.12 explains that separation rooted in disobedience, independence. Adam brought death to the whole world by his disobedience and wanting to be independent of the Lord. Sin is a tyrant. And only through Jesus can we be restored to that reason of why we were created. Ephesians 2 verse 1 through 5 You have quickened who were dead in trespass and sin. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world according to the prince and part of the air the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation, our life. But verse 4, God who is rich in mercy for his great love. That's the reason, the whole reason it was about love. Wherewith he loved us in creating us and saving us. When we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved has raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now love what 2 Corinthians 5, 19 says, reconciled to God, reconciled to the very reason of creation through Christ Jesus. He is our covenant. He is the reason for living. Look at me just before I stop preaching and minister to your physical needs. I want to ask you a question. Very important question. If you die tonight, what guarantee do you have you're going to be in heaven? What guarantee do you have? Shh, think. Don't talk, think. Because you prayed a prayer? Because you feel goosebumps when you worship? That's no guarantee. What guarantee you have you're going to be with Jesus? Listen to me. Just because someone cries at an altar, it doesn't mean he's going to heaven. Or just because they want to escape hell, well, I want to go to heaven, so I don't want to burn in hell. Jesus is not a far escape. Why? Why live life without the Lord? What guarantee do you have? I'm going to give it to you. you want to, do you want to hear it? Put your hands up if you want to hear it. There's no guarantee just because you pray a prayer. There's no guarantee just because you speak in tongues. A lot of folks speak in tongues and are in hell right now. <laughs> by their fruit, you'll know them, not by their tongue. So, 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 what guarantee? Four things that we are given in Scripture. Write them down right, right before I'm done. Number one, let's talk. Shh, easy, 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 easy. Instrument. Shh. Jesus came to a place called Caesarea Philippi and he said to his disciples, whom do men say I am? They said, well, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're one of the prophets. Who do you say I am? Peter speaks, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you but my father. And then he says, and for this I give you the keys of the kingdom, meaning you're in. What caused Jesus to give him such a guarantee that he will actually get in? If the Lord says, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom, 
you're in. But what made Jesus say it? Four things. Number one, write this down. Peter stood face to face with the Son of God. No one can be saved unless you have a face to face encounter with the Son of God. Not about a prayer, about coming to Jesus where he becomes more real to you than life. If Jesus is not real to you, you're not saved. You cannot be saved. It's all then a religious experience. When I got saved, Jesus became so real to me, I was in class. I was 19 years old. I was crying, Jesus, I love you, I love you, I love you in my French class and all the kids were looking at me like I lost my mind. Jesus became more real to me than the teacher or the students. And when I have trouble in my life, I go back to that moment. When I met Jesus, that's the foundation of my soul. He's more real to me now than I'm looking at you. I've never seen him, but he's more real to me than I can look at you. He's more real to me than you are. How? Because I met him. I truly met the Lord. What did he say to us? Come unto me. You come to me, I'll give you rest. So you have to have a meeting with him then. Number two. Peter knew by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, this is the Messiah. Not by reading a book or the Bible itself. Many people read the Bible and don't know that Jesus is the Son of God. Some Christians are foolish enough to say Jesus is one way to heaven. That's demonic. That's a lie. Jesus is the way to heaven. There's no other way to heaven. So how do you know it? By the Spirit. There's a lot of people who know the Bible who don't know the Lord. So the second foundation to salvation is a revelation by the Holy Spirit that Jesus is Messiah. Because many have Messiahs. The Jews have a rabbi from New York who's been dead for 30 years, who's never been one time to Israel. You see them doing this at the Wailing Wall. They believe in Chabad. Chabad is a sect of Judaism where there's a rabbi who's been dead for a long time that they believe he's Messiah. And many wonderful Christians go to the Holy Land, see big billboards and don't know it says this is the Messiah and the guy looks like Abraham Lincoln who's never been to Israel born in New York the Bible says Jesus was born in Bethlehem not New York <laughs> and millions of Jews believe that boy is the Messiah why they're deceived Muslims believe in some fellow that's going to come their Messiah Hindus have their own Messiah the real Messiah is revealed by the Holy Spirit. Not through books and magazines and TV programs that try to prove this and to prove that. They're all lies. Nothing can convince you otherwise. Because the Holy Ghost showed you. Not CNN. Or somebody else who convinced you through a movie. Nothing needs to convince me. I don't need no movies to convince me Jesus is Messiah. How stupid. To read a book on the resurrection, to, be, to convince myself Jesus really, come on. If the Holy Ghost doesn't do it, they'll convince you one way and then you'll change your mind the next day. You must be convinced by the Holy Spirit. Number three, he publicly, first he confessed him. He said, you're the Christ. You can't be saved without confessing Jesus. And number four, he confessed him publicly, meaning no shame. Confessed him before the rest, all the others heard him. So any believer who is ashamed of the gospel is not true, a true believer. You cannot tell me you're a Christian if you're ashamed to talk about Jesus. So four things. Have you met him? One on one. Two, do you know by the Spirit he is Messiah? Three, have you confessed him? And four, are you ashamed of him? If you're not ashamed, you're in. Then you can die in peace. You can close your eyes in peace. 
Lift your hands. Come on. Come on, Bruce. It is well with my soul. It is well. Sing it. Because you know him, everyone stand and sing it. It is well. Lift the instruments, please. With my soul, it is well. Now I want you all, I want you all to stand. No one, no one be seated unless you have no legs or you're sick. We're in the presence of the Lord. Are you ready for your healing now? Yes. Now before, before, you, before I pray for your healing, I want every head to be bowed by your heads. I want to ask you the question one more time. If you die tonight, how do you know you're going to heaven? I just give it to you. Those of you that have absolute peace and that wonderful assurance that none can shake it out of you. That you know, that you know, that you know, that you know He is your Lord and Master and Savior. That you know, that you know, that you know your eyes will see Him. That you know, that you know, that you know, you're going to live with him forever. Put your hands up high, I want to see it. Okay, thank you. Put your hands down. Keep your heads bowed. But is there anyone here who has that question? Who doesn't know for a fact if you died today or this week, you have a question in your heart, will I really go to heaven? Will I really be accepted? Well, then your salvation is questioned, isn't it? If you want to have that assurance, that absolute assurance that none can shake out of you, you can have joy in your life and peace with God. You can go to bed with such peace in your life. You want it. The greatest miracle is salvation. The greatest miracle is not physical. It's spiritual. You've never experienced true life and you want to. Before I pray for the sick, I want to pray for those who are spiritually in need. If you really want to know Jesus and you don't know that you know him yet like that. Won't you put your hand up high so I can pray for you? Oh yeah, a lot of hands. Would you all pray this prayer after me and everyone pray it with them? Out loud say, Dear Lord Jesus, I want to know you. I believe you are the Son of God. And I believe you came to this earth and died for me on the cross and shed your blood for me. And I believe with all my heart you rose from the dead. You're alive, alive forevermore. And you're coming back again. Now, dear Jesus, I need you. Forgive my sins. Come into my heart. Save my soul. Make yourself real to me. More real than life. More real than myself. Oh, dear Jesus, by your Holy Spirit, Give me victory 
your joy, your peace. And now, Lord, wash me, cleanse me with your precious blood. Live your life in me. And when that day comes, I want to see you and see you smile. Thank you, Lord, for dying for me. Now lift your hands to him everywhere. You are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord. That's right. You sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord. You are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. And we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. And we bless your holy name. For you are great. You do miracles. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You do miracles. There is no one else like you. There is no one else for your grace. The whisper now, you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship and we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. For you are great. You do me. Just, just a whisper now. 
for you are great you do me Son of God, wonderful Redeemer, we praise just a whisper. of the Lord is in this house shh no one crying no one screaming please shh, shh. lady I beg you shh we didn't come to hear you scream lady we don't want to hear you scream shh Jesus is in this house lift your hands to him now hallelujah
miracles happening already. Those sick in body, place your hand on that sickness, even as you worship. As I pray, the Lord is going to touch your body. These are your people, Lord, heal them. Your word declares he was wounded for transgressions, bruised for iniquities, chastised for peace. Stripes, we are healed. Give me the praise for that. I step into my office and I command that disease to go now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and receive your healing. Some of you feel like heat on your body. That's the power of God healing you. Some feel like electricity. That's his resurrection power. Healing you. Some are like that woman with the issue of blood. You just know you're healed. Someone's left ear just popped open. You've not been able to hear with that ear, but just popped open. Arthritis has just been healed way up top. Begin to move that part of the body. It's completely gone now. That pain is gone. Everyone lift your hands and lift your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost out loud. Come on. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. I give you praise, Jesus. Someone's jaw has been healed. A lower back has just been healed. Stomach cancer is being healed. I command that cancer to go in the mighty name of Jesus. A skin problem has just been healed. I command it to go in the mighty name of Jesus. There's a lot God is doing now. Lift your hands and just pray in the Holy Ghost. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. There's miracles happening everywhere. Someone's neck has just been healed. I give you praise. Someone's neck has just been healed. Someone's right leg has just been healed. Those that feel that anointing on you. Some of you feel like electricity. Some of you felt like a, like a fire come on you earlier. Some just felt a gentle, gentle warmth. That's the power of God. If God is healing you, whether I'm calling that healing out or not, it doesn't matter. If God is healing you, you come and stand here to the, to the left. Somebody's shoulder, left shoulder, just completely loose from pain. You had an accident. You were in a car accident a few days ago. Somebody in this auditorium was in a car accident a few days ago. And you injured your left arm. The pain completely left you now. If the Lord is healing you, if you felt his power, quickly get out of your seats and stand here to the left. Everyone else lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. If God has healed you, if you felt his power, I don't need to call your healing out. 
there's only so much I can do. But if you felt his touch on your body, whether I called the healing out or not, check out that, check out that sickness, it's gone. Take a deep breath, move that leg up and down. Move that shoulder, move that neck. Do what you're not able to do before. And if God has healed you, you come and stand here on the side quickly. You come and stand here on the left, on the side quickly. Don't stay, do not stay in that seat. You could lose that healing. Whether you come on the platform or not, it doesn't matter. Let God see you in that line. Affirm your healing as you come into that line. Everyone lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. I see glaucoma healed. I see somebody with glaucoma. I see somebody else with a, with a problem in your eyes. They're like a film on your eyes. And you see shadows, but God has just cleared that vision. He cleared that vision. People of God, lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. Bring that man up here, Pastor. Bring him up here. Bring him up here and get that microphone in your hand, please, my brother. For over a come year, here, Pastor, he's not been able to walk a disease. I do not even know what it dear is. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, dear Jesus, I give you the praise. Bring him up here. Bring him up here. You were not able to walk, my brother. What was wrong with you? Plantar fasciitis, Pastor, for a while. Pardon? Plantar fasciitis for a whole year. A what? Plantar fasciitis for a whole year. What is that? It's like a foot condition. Every time we'll get up in the morning, it'll be hard to get up. I'll, I'll struggle. And, but now, I, I'm not limping anymore. I will limp to work. I will stand long hours. And now... What did you feel go through you? Like, like a burning sensation. I, I was in a like, what? A burning sensation when we were worshiping. I couldn't contain myself. I was like, what am I feeling? That's the power of God, my brother. That's the power of God on you. Help him up. Help him up. Help him up. You want to you wanna start walking? I know that... That anointing is strong on you. That anointing is strong on you. Start doing what you are not able to do, brother. Come on. It doesn't hurt anymore. Give the Lord a mighty hand. It doesn't hurt you anymore. Who came with you? Who was here with you? Who, who came with you? A friend of mine, um, Eureka, if you're, if you're here. Come here, come here, come here, that's Fred, come here. What's your name? Um, Eureka is a friend of mine that we came to answer the service. Come, come, come quickly, come down, his friend, come on down. Explain that, I've never heard of that. Explain that condition. Plantar vertices, um, well, medically speaking, is like a foot condition. It's like a pain that is in the bottom of the heel and stuff like that doesn't allow you to walk and stuff. It's like a heavy pressure and stuff like that. And for all, um, keep, keep walking. I knew the Lord's going to heal that guy. Bring him up here. Pastor. I saw the anointing on him while I was preaching the word. You said keep an accident. Walking, keep walking. Huh? Accident two days ago. He's the man in the accident two dear days Jesus, ago. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, we rebuke it. Pick him up, boys. Pick him up, guys. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. Somebody say praise the Lord. Pick him up. Pick him up. Where is his friend? Where is that man's friend? Where is that man's friend? Where is the man's friend? You, whatever her name is. Is that her? Come here, come here. You've seen him with this problem? Come here, both of you. Come here, come here. We magnify your name, Holy Lord. You had troubles. You've been having troubles with your stomach. You've had troubles with your stomach. From what? Huh? All your life. Well, I just knew it by the Spirit. Come here. Come here, girl. God's going to heal you. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's the power of God on her already. That's the power of God on her already. That problem in the stomach is gone in the mighty name of the Lord. Oh, with that glory on her. Come on. Help her up, help her up. I just saw your stomach. What was, what's been wrong with your stomach? I'm always getting sick. I mean... Why not? I'm always getting sick. I'm always throwing up. You're always throwing up. Yeah, I'm and then, uh, for for how long? Ever since I was young, I always had trouble. Like I'm always getting never not after tonight. The Lord has just healed you, girl. What are you feel on you? What are you feeling on? Come here, come here, friend. Come here, you come here. What are you feeling on you? I feel 
the power and also like I used to have like oh dear God, I give you the praise, I give you the glory. Somebody say hallelujah. Pick them, pick them up both. Come on. I didn't expect the anointing just fall like this. Bring that guy here. Bring him here. Bring him here, guys. He can't walk, but bring him here. What are you feeling on you, man? Hello, I'm talking to you. What are you feeling on you? My burning. What? Fire burning. Take more of it, my. Lift your hands and thank the Lord for His mercy. We magnify your name, Lord. Pick up that, pick, pick up that pipe, please, Bruce. Where is, where is the other? Oh, that's him. Pick him up. That lady sitting next to him. Come here. The lady was sitting next to him. Come here, quick, quick, quick. Come, girl. Come on. Come on. Get, 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 get up here, here. People, lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost just a second. Pick up the key. That's your friend. That's your mama. Come here, bring him here. Both of them. She speaks Spanish. Only Spanish. You've had problems. Mama, mama, mama. You've had problems with your heart. Skips. Skips. <gasps> Sometimes the Lord, the Lord is healing your heart. Jesus. There's something about his name. Pick up the mama. Jesus. Jesus. Easy. Jesus. There is something about that day. God is healing that mama. I don't know what was wrong with her. Except I saw the heart. And God is just healing her. He healed that guy with the, with the accident. He healed that girl with the stomach that she's had for years. That guy was healed of that something I never heard of. And he's just having glory over there. What, what happened to her pastor? She had like a fly, a black spot in her eye for over a year. While you were praying, completely cleared, vision restored. So you had a fly on my arm, on my arm. like a filter. Yes. That's the one I called. I yes. someone with a filter on the eye yes. who couldn't see, and it just cleared up. Awesome. Pardon? I have the um, like electricity on my body, and just... oh. they'll all pass away. <laughs> Take your seats. Take your seats. But there's something about that name. Jesus, you're the sweetest name I know. And you're just the same. Pick her up. That's the glory of God on her. Your lovely name. That's the reason why we love you so. One of you girls, you've had trouble with your right leg. You're sitting here. Come here. Quick, quick, quick. Come here. Jesus. You're the sweetest name. Oh. And you're just the same. Hey, choir, get here. Quick, come on. Come on. Quick, quick, quick. All of you. All of you. All of you. All of you. Stand, stand right here. Stand right here. In the center. Come, 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 come quickly. Come, come, come quickly. Come, on, come. Lord, meet every need in our life. Lift your hands to receive it. Come on. Yeah, Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome. Can you lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost? 
What happened to the lady? She had a gallstone, Pastor. While we were worshiping a moment ago, all the pain left her. She had an ulcer. No, gallstone. Gallstones. Gall <sighs> I rebuke it. Goes, goes, goes. What happened to the lady there? It, it, a heart pain, heart condition. What do you feel on you? My shoulder and my heart. What do you feel on you now? Epilepsy. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Back. Epilepsy. Felt the touch of God. The thing is gone in Jesus' name. You know the people here have such faith. They have such faith. Holy Spirit. Thou art well come in this place. Holy Spirit, Thou art well come in. Omnipotent of mercy. Pastor Jonathan, tell me please. Heart palpitation, felt the peace of God as you were preaching the word tonight. Pick her up. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Choir, you want this? Look at me, all of you. Choir, open your eyes. You want this? You want the anointing? Join hands. Join hands. You, you're going to feel like, a, like a, a gentle warmth come on you. Receive from the Lord right now. Uh -huh. You ready? Why don't you stand up and receive yourself? Come on. Lift your hands and receive. Holy Spirit, Thou art well come in this place. Welcome Him. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome. I, I want that lady there. Come here, darling. Are you with her? Come here, both of you. Omnipotent Father of mercy. That tall man, that tall young man with the glasses. Come here. Thou art welcome. For it healing divine now that lady did you say, just keep him down there a second that woman is a child of heaven I'm telling you help her up come on Josh the Lord is this your your wife the Lord just called her a child of heaven the Lord has a great future for you in ministry. In ministry. You are a solid rock to a lot of people, dear. And the anointing is going to increase on you. It's going to increase on you greatly. So get ready. Ah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ah. Ah. Oh, that's glory on you, girl. That's glory on you. It's the Lord. You see, I see Him in your eyes. I see the Lord in your eyes. That's what I was talking about earlier. Be a strength to the believers, honey. Be a strength to the saints. Because they need it. They need it. Lord, anoint their life in the mighty name of the Lord. 
That's a great healing. Metal poisoning. Tonight she felt heat. Tell me again. Metal poisoning. Heavy metal, metal poisoning. poisoning. What, dear? MRI contrast. Gadolinium. Lord Jesus. From the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Let your power flow. Oh. The Lord, Pastor Greg, come with me. Bring your wife with you. The Lord is giving me a word for this man and this church. And by the way, the Lord's going to heal you. Yeah. No, wait, wait, wait. I'm going to pray for you before I dismiss. All right. What, what, what happened to you? Pardon? Two strokes. Strokes? You had a stroke as a young man? I well, believe God to completely remove the effects of it. Pastor, come, come stand with me, your wife. I want to just stand. Let's see. Let's yeah, stand here and look at people. Saints of God, this is a mighty man of God's kingdom. And the, the anointing I feel here is strong because there's much glory in this place and much precious, much precious spiritual seed has gone into the ground. And the Lord has, a, has a, an amazing future for all of you this church and I'm here to tell you by the Spirit of God you're gonna to touch the entire city of Miami that's that's a fact of heaven and now that you have this beautiful miracle you had today is no accident that we're here and I want you all to support him in prayer support the ministry financially so God so God can bless your life and and be loyal to the God in him. So I'm not, I'm not saying because this, because he asked me to say it or anyone asked me. The Lord is moving on me to say these words. And he, he has ordained, the Lord has ordained that this man be used mightily in this city and beyond the city with carrying carrying the presence of the Lord and the power of the Lord and the Lord's going to bless his wife and family because he promised it and I am asking you many of you that know how to intercede and pray begin to pray for that beautiful property we saw that the glory of God would rest on it that men and women will come into that property and feel God's power and receive Jesus as Savior and live a holy life and that miracles would happen now before I leave because we feel such a blessed presence of the Lord I want to ask that the people who are uh, on the leadership or people who have been uh, part of the ministry here uh, on staff or people who are involved in uh, as volunteers uh, so staff and volunteers and anyone connected to this man of God would you come and stand here with us? Well, I want to honor 
I want to pray over you that God will bless you. Bless your future. Bless your life, your destiny. Magnify His name through your life. Help her up. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give the platform back to the pastor so he can bless you before you leave. But come, come, come and fill this middle area here. There's a lot of space here. Come. Help this sweet lady, somebody, please. No, no, pastor, not you, please. And I would highly recommend one day that you have him preach. He's dynamic. You, you two need to become friends. He has a great church in Orlando and great ministry. Make sure I lay hands on that gentleman that came down before I leave, that God would heal him. Right there with the glasses. But I have to obey the Holy Spirit right now on, on what he wants to do because... Thank you. Uh, can I take five minutes? Yeah. Uh, we are living, look at me all of you. We are living in amazing days and also dangerous days. The world is going to change very rapidly the next five years because of artificial intelligence. See, the Lord Jesus said, he said, when I come, will there be faith on the earth? Because men is uh, accelerating in knowledge and less and less people need the Lord in their life. Many Christians today are living a weak Christian life because of all the things that the internet and life is bombarding them with the things of the flesh. But God has a people. You are His people. God has chosen you, handpicked you for this hour to be a lighthouse to people in Miami, people throughout uh, the city, your neighbors, people who know you, you know them, and beyond this area. But you cannot be successful as a Christian without being connected to a body. This is where God puts you. He is the man God has ordained to be your pastor, your leader in the spirit. And that's why I said earlier, pray for him and, and support him financially, support the ministry financially so God can bless you back. But also, we are, we are in, a, in a season. I have been meeting uh, Pastor Jonathan Miller, uh, has brought a lot of pastors to meet with me. And I've met with so many, uh, not just through him, but others. I, I just be, was in Brazil, and we made a very quick announcement, and over a thousand pastors came one night at 11 p.m. Didn't want to leave. It was like one in the morning. It was still sitting there. And they expressed uh, shockingly to me, shockingly, that one pastor's wife a week today in Brazil commits suicide. One preacher's wife a week because of the pressure of ministry. This is in Brazil. And, 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 and it's happening probably here too. We just don't hear it. When I heard from those pastors that one a week, one pastor's wife a week is killing herself. It, I was shocked, shocked. And I was, and, and I'm hearing more and more and more about the challenges pastors are facing here and elsewhere. And that's why we need men and women like you to pray for us. And that's why you need to pray for this man of God. But at the same time, at the same time, we must be loyal to the call on his life and the call on your life. So I'm gonna pray over you right now. Can I do that? Yes. That the Lord will bless you, anoint you, protect you, and make you a light that will shine and others will see it. Amen. 
I have, I have two assignments before I go home. One, get them saved. Two, strengthen the saints. And that's my job. So lift your hands to heaven. Wonderful Lord, I thank you for this beautiful sanctuary. I thank you for Pastor Greg and his wife and family. And I thank you, Lord, for the future you have placed before him and a mighty destiny. And I thank you for the staff of people and the members and those who are a part of this life-giving ministry that you'll bless them that you'll protect them from the world protect them from pollution the world's pollution and protect them from the enemy in Jesus name and Lord I pray you will cover them today afresh with the blood of the Lamb your precious blood and I apply the blood of Jesus on them, each one of them now. I also pray, Lord, that you'll anoint them with new vision, new joy in their life. You'll use them as lights in a dark world that they will bring multitudes to the cross, to Golgotha, to you, Lord and to your precious life-giving Holy Spirit. And I do pray that each one of them, each one of them, will, be, will, will, will become strong and get stronger in the Holy Ghost until that glorious day, that not one of them will weaken in spirit, but they'll be mighty in the Holy Ghost, sanctified unto honor unto ministry unto use for the kingdom that each one of us will stand on that day please hear me Lord will stand on that day and see that smile on your lovely face that we would not be ashamed and so I pray unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us before the throne with joy without blame to the only wise God be glory that you'll keep them as the apple of the eye hide them under the shadow of your wings in Jesus name Amen now I want you to lift your hands and claim your families will be saved every one of them will be saved. And Pastor Greg, I want you to pray a blessing over everyone here, over everyone, that God will bless his people in the name of Jesus. And you're the man, you're the authority of this house. Praise God, thank you. Come on, lift up your hands all over this place. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for your mercy, for your grace. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for the teaching that we got tonight. Now I pray, Father, every single word that was spoken in the name of Jesus Christ, every single word of intimacy and spiritual fellowship will become a reality in the life of each and every person here. Father, we don't want to miss heaven. We want to know you and we want to see a smile when we get there. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, <clears throat> amen. Now, in about five minutes, you'll have a chance to leave. But before we do that, I want to give you an opportunity to worship the Lord with your offerings. I'm not going to tell you what to give unto the Lord. But I'm simply going to tell you, ask the Lord, what do I need to give to show my love to you tonight? You're going to bring, give a love offering unto the Lord. So you can go and sit down in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.
and I'm going to ask the ushers while you're walking back to your seats as the Lord Lord what do you want me to give tonight to manifest my love for you in Jesus name mating sing a song in Jesus name thank you Lord Jesus Christ you are God more than able ever faithful you're always good yes, you are God more than able ever faithful you're always good you are God more than able up an envelope More than ushers please pass the envelopes going to ask everyone to pick up an envelope for your offerings uh, pick up an envelope and ask the Lord what do you want me to give tonight as a sign of my love for you so do that right now all over this place for those who are watching over the internet you could also manifest your love to the Lord as you give unto him those of you who are watching on YouTube at the bottom of the page we have a link click on that link uh, and you can give unto the Lord in a couple of minutes. I'm going to pray on those offerings. Those of you are watching on Facebook, you could click the blue button that says donate. That would be your way of giving. Those of you on, on our Shekinah app, you can click the heart button and you can give unto the Lord. And in the space where you uh, to write your prayer, just write, I love you, Lord. And we'll have a chance to pray for them. Um, on them in a couple of minutes so we'll sing that song one more time you are God more than able always good everyone pick up an envelope those who are online do that right now and I'm gonna pray for all of you in a couple of minutes you are God you are God Faithful. faithful say away say you are God
Just wave your offerings before God. Father, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, I bless the offerings of your church. I bless the offerings of your children. I pray, Father God, that they will prosper. Their families will prosper. Everything that they touch, everywhere that they go, will prosper for the glory of your name. Say you are God. You could pass down your offerings. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Say you are God. You are faithful, oh God. There is no one like you. We honor you. We lift you up. We magnify you with the beauty of holiness. Just uh, uh, tonight will uh, tomorrow night will meet up here again. Donc nous rappeler que tout le monde demain soir si Dieu le veut nous là pour une autre session pour te prier pour des familles et dimanche matin on a quelque chose pour nous prier pour finances. Tomorrow night we will pray for families and Sunday morning we will pray for finances in the name of Jesus Christ. So it's a pack weekend. It's a great weekend. How many of you were blessed tonight? <laughs> Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Oh Father, we glorify you. We thank you for who you are. Again, we thank you for the great night. Thank you for you, the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for challenging us, Father God, to have the right perspectives and to keep my eyes on you. We love you, Lord Jesus Christ. Cover your children as they go home. Thank you for your angels around them and help them to go home in the fellowship of you. We love you and magnify you in the powerful and precious name of our Lord and Jesus Christ. Go with the grace and the peace of God. See you guys tomorrow night in Jesus' name. Shekina.fm Disponible Kounia sous HD. Mais quelque façon, ou ka connecté à Shekina sur Radio HD. Premièrement, gardez si radio la HD. Ensuite, tournez sur 93.1 pour joindre Shekina.fm. Et puis, cliquez sur HD3. Tout ce qui est chez Kinala, cassez bouton. Chez Kinala.fr, disponible pour Néa sur 93.1 HD3.